Welcome to Town Topics. I'm your host, Amanda Thompson, and I'm here with First Selectman Jim Hayden. How are you, Jim? I'm doing very well, thank you. How about yourself? I'm Amanda? doing great. I think it's the, is it the 15th of July today? It's the 16th, 16th? 16th of July. <laughs> I should pay attention to what day it is. <laughs> let's see now, let's see, July 14th is Bastille Day over oh, in France. Yes. Yep. And, uh, and then the 15th was nothing too earth shattering. It's not the Ides of March, which would have been March 15th. Uh, <laughs> but, but it was my first day back from vacation. So for me, it was memorable being back on the 15th. But today's the 16th, and we're yes. ready to. Today's Town Topics Day. We're ready to talk <laughs> about Town Topics. Oh, that's right. Well, welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> so I suppose things are a little bit, are they a little bit calmer for you in the summer? Or. Yeah. Um, ask me, ask me next month because <laughs> what it is is you, you've, you've in during July you've got the end of the year June thirtieth you've got all mm -hmm. the financial things that that entails. Also, we have you know the building uh, projects going on that right. we talk about with the roofs and everything. But a lot of behind the scenes things happen uh, called bond anticipation notes, which is how we're paying for this. Right. And so there's so the short answer is there's still a lot going on in mm -hmm. in uh, in July uh, around this time of the month. This slows down a little bit, and then about a month from now we mm -hmm. start to gear up for all the different things that will be happening in, in the fall. Yeah. So if, if there is going to be a little slow time, we're in it. <laughs> well, that's good. But uh, we, I, I think we have quite a few projects going on around town. I'm sure some people have some questions about the center of town. Sure. And well, yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, sometimes uh, you know people drive by and they say gee what are, you know what's going on there mm -hmm. and in this particular case if you're driving through the center of town uh, you'll see a construction in the uh, in front of the center shops shopping center right and what that is is that's a brand new uh, building that the bank Suffield bank uh, mm -hmm. is is uh, erecting the uh, Suffield Bank, uh, why am I blanking out on what their... Uh, the People's Bank? P, uh, Is that right? Right. It's People's Bank of Western Mass in Connecticut, not to be confused with the People's United, which is a right. huge bank down in, in Fairfield County yeah. that just purchased another bank in central Connecticut called United Bank. Oh. So don't want to confuse you with all that. And if it's okay with the folks at uh, United Bank, uh, I mean at uh, People's Bank, uh, it's, uh, we'll keep on calling it uh, Suffield Bank. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, I believe what they've done is they've combined the names just so people mm -hmm. still understand that it's Suffield Bank. Yeah. So anyways, the uh, prior to Suffield uh, Bank being acquired uh, by the new entity, uh, the, they had planned to put a new building up Mm -hmm. and put it in the spot that's going up now. So it wasn't a case of, well, geez, the bank was sold and somebody decided to right. to make the change. It was a strat marketing strategy. And what it is is they, uh, statistically, banks are doing better when, uh, you know, getting new assets and, mm -hmm. you know, and new customers and things like that, when they've got a very in-your-face profile. And mm -hmm. so that, you know, substitute on the road uh, right. So that people see it and and they understand it's there. There's some people that may you know driven through the center of town for years and might mm -hmm. say, I know there's a bank there, but I'm not sure what bank that is. Well, right. they're trying to correct that by mm -hmm. saying, okay, here's the bank. Whether you do business with us or not, we want you to know that we're here and we really right. are looking to solicit business. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is uh, look should be finished this year. Uh, mm -hmm. They're doing a lot of. Uh, Earthworks movement right now, right. And getting ready to uh, to start to, to build it. Uh, I, once they start, you know, concrete's down and they start to put the framing up and everything, it's probably a three month process. Okay. So sometime in the late fall. So uh, yeah, we're uh, at this point. There's not a new tenant to go into the current Suffield Bank, but I know the landlord and our economic development people are working very hard to, to do that. Right mm -hmm. now, uh, the shopping center is 100% full. 
okay. so it's Very fully nice. fully leased and uh, I know the landlord wants to keep that going. Yeah. So the uh, so anyway, so we've got that going on. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got uh, you know off one of the side streets in the industrial area. There's a brewery going, uh, yes. and uh, sometime in October, thereabouts, late you know, early to mid. Well, I should say mid to late fall. Uh, we anticipate that the brewery would be there, and there's some really interesting things that they're going to be trying to do there, and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it sounds. Like it's going to be a great, great event uh, to have in town. Uh, we have a vineyard. We'll have a brewery. Yeah. So the uh, that certainly uh, is a nice amenity to have. Uh, and it, it in this particular case is going to be in the industrial uh, yeah. of Crimes Road, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 Almost famous brewery. I think is what they um, landed on for any. I okay. I know the. Uh, they had one name and then they were changing it to another yeah. name because it was a copyright issue. Right. So. Um, I'm pretty sure that was the what they landed on in the end. The so successor. We'll keep our yeah. eye out yeah. for that. <laughs> and then uh, if uh, if you're driving uh, down Route 20 and you're going towards the connector, you see uh, on the right hand side you you see construction going on and that's a. Uh, uh, there, there's been some things that the company that is building uh, the gas station needed to do, mm -hmm. and so they're still working on that. So that's taking a little a bit longer than what they thought. But there's uh, even today, as we speak, there's a barn that's being knocked down at, at a different spot on Route 20, which is where the liquor cabinet uh, shopping center is, and where yeah. Three Brothers are, mm -hmm. and uh, and. Uh, what they're they're going to do is it's been approved for a Cumberland Farms, mm -hmm. so it'll be a Cumberland Farms uh, gas station and you know all the different food and everything that they have inside. So yeah. um, we'll have uh, we've got Phillips 66, which has expanded a couple times and is doing very well. Mm -hmm. uh, the spot that is being worked on is Pride, uh, in mm -hmm. that Pride station. Uh, I'm not sure when that's going to be finished. Right. Uh, there's still a lot of work to do on that, and um, and I don't have the timeline on Cumberland, but they're they're moving straight ahead. Mm -hmm. So, so we you know we've got that, and we, then we've also got some uh, local businesses in town that are buying equipment or adding. Mm -hmm. uh, so our, those are our manufacturers around the airport. So mm -hmm. there's some nice uh, there's there's certainly some nice um, economic development going in town and. We have gotten a couple warm nibbles working at the Economic Development Commission with the uh, the realtor for the StubHub building. Oh, nice! Uh, so we've had a couple warm leads on that. So we're we're continuing to work with our vendors, our, our real estate realtors, mm -hmm. our owners of property, to uh, help them uh, market themselves and and get their buildings full or yeah. create buildings that will help create traffic yeah. and taxes and, mm -hmm. and capital in, uh, investments and that's all good. That's fantastic. And another thing that just went through, um, Glasso doing um, solar. Yes. And that was exciting. They were sure to give you know you and Gary Haynes, who works at the town hall, a lot of credit for getting solar started in town and kind of starting that momentum. And now they're going to do it, which will reduce. I think they'll it will cover their solar panels will cover a third of their energy costs. So they'll not be drawing as much power from the grid, which I think right. is a benefit well, to the town. Yeah. And it's certainly some benefits. Uh, Financial benefits for them to yes, reduce their, their reduce their costs. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but you were really the momentum of that. I mean, in town, what five years ago or we, so? We in the town uh, we uh, put uh, solar on four different town buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, we um, have done a lot of energy efficient things. Uh, the building that we're in, we uh, ended up uh, going and, and changing all the light bulbs in all the town buildings. Uh, mm -hmm to LED, so the, uh, that re was reducing costs and it also was uh, was increasing efficiency. And then, mm -hmm. you know, the, um, we worked with uh, Eversource to uh, have them have uh, the street lights changed uh, 
to LED, uh, and they did it. They were supposed to do it like three or four years from now, but they did it two years ago, yeah. uh, based on conversations I was able to have with them, and, mm -hmm. and said, you know, it really would make sense to go ahead and do that, and they were able to, to, to go ahead and do that, and we're going to show a savings of roughly 25 percent on our street light bulb. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? I mean, it makes a huge difference going. Yeah, I mean, it, it's environmentally friendly. Uh, it's uh, and it's economical and mm -hmm. and efficient. I mean, LED bulbs are much more efficient than than uh, the uh, you know the troton, the normal fluorescent or incandescent. But especially when you're talking street lighting, you got these big sodium. Uh, I'll be a happy man when we eventually get all the gym lights at the high school changed yeah. to uh, to LED lights mm -hmm. uh, because you know big lights like that uh, have sodium uh, lights. Uh, uh, and also a lot of the street lights, uh, they're just huge drains on energy. They're right. very expensive to run and they're expensive to replace. Mm -hmm. All right, bet. So it's, all, it's yeah. all good. Yeah, so lots of cool things going on. Um, so capital projects, we had, there was a town meeting. Yeah, we had one in June, and, and June uh, just a couple of days uh, after, uh, the town meeting was a couple of days after our last edition of uh, Town Topics. And so we closed out some capital accounts and we uh, opened uh, and got re received approval for three new capital projects. Okay. So the capital dollars are not new expenditures, they're planned expenditures uh, that is approved in the budget, mm -hmm. uh, the annual budget, which is the Board of Selectmen uh, side of the house, town buildings, town, uh, town government. Mm -hmm. uh, Board of Education, which was is the schools, mm -hmm. uh, debt repayment, um, which is the 2012 uh, bond for Seymour, and also for the temporary borrowing that we're doing for the projects now that we'll talk about uh, the capital projects. Mm -hmm. So when you you, know, you and then you have the capital dollars. So those mm -hmm. all four components of those are approved by the town on an annual basis, and then. Uh, when in this particular case in capital, what we do is we go ahead and we uh, uh, come to the town and say, okay, we've got that project now, and we get mm -hmm. uh, to call for a town meeting, and then the town gets to approve it. Okay. So it so wasn't it's like a double check, almost like it's well, yeah. already passed, and you're just like, okay, so now here's we said we're spending it like this, and this is exactly what we're doing. Right. So everyone feels yeah, good and, about and, it, kind of. Well, the other thing is, is, is you've got the bulk purchase mm -hmm. of dollars mm -hmm. that was approved mm -hmm. and then you have to carve out the pieces of the pie that you said right. you were going to do or sometimes things change in capital where something like was something was very important I, because we do a five-year plan a rolling right. five-year plan so that we're always five years ahead mm -hmm. of what we think but something can happen something can blow uh, you know uh, become uh, decimated. <laughs> uh, I suppose. Uh, you, you know heating and air conditioning that you yeah. thought that was going to give you 10 more years, mm -hmm. give you three more months. Uh, right. So then all of a sudden, you're, you're, you, what you would do is you would update your five-year plan, mm -hmm. and then you'd say, okay, we're not going to be able to do this, this, and this. But mm -hmm. it's different when we take the dollars and we go to the town and we say, okay, here's the breakout, and mm -hmm. here's the three projects we want to approve. Mm -hmm. So those we are committed to, and those we'll do, regardless of anything yeah. else that, that happened because we have committed to going forward on that. So we had, uh, we're going to uh, sometime uh, late summer or early fall, we're going to paint the uh, Kilvon Center. Uh, and uh, That's the, East, the red and, building at East Granby Farms. East Granby Rec Recreation Building. Mm -hmm. um, and we're also going to paint the historical barn. The historical barn was uh, purchased uh, and set up by the Historical Society and mm -hmm. Over the years, they have uh, it become a town building, mm -hmm. uh, so we are responsible for the exterior maintenance, and mm -hmm. we're going to paint. They, they need some paint, and there's mm -hmm. some repairs that need to be done on some wood that's rotted in different areas, or sills, or things like that. Just mm -hmm. normal maintenance, like what you do right. at the house, when you, you just make sure before you paint it that you do whatever repairs. And speaking of the Dave Kilbon Recreation Barn, Dave Kilbon. Uh, has uh, retired off the Board of Finance. Not only has he retired off the Board of Finance, he's retired off the town of East Granby. <laughs> yeah. uh, what I mean by that is for 34 years, Dave Kilbon was uh, provided 
uh, leadership, whether it was on the uh, originally on the board of finance or 12 years as first elected, mm -hmm. and then uh, 12 years on the board of finance the second time, yeah. uh, provided a, a wonderful amount of leadership and a lot of things that are make East Granby what East Granby is mm -hmm. uh, are due to the planning and energy uh, over the years uh, and the the collaborative spirit that uh, Dave had. So. Yeah. Uh, Dave uh, has uh, decided to move up to Vermont where his grandkids are mm -hmm. uh, and split uh, time between uh, Vermont and Colorado where uh, he's got another group of grandkids. Mm -hmm. So he, uh, he uh, officially, his last day in town was uh, June 24th, I oh, think wow. it was. And uh, we, we certainly wish uh, Dave well, thank him for all the wonderful things mm -hmm. that we did that he did uh, and, and was able to help accomplish. And also, uh, uh, you may say, well, he was chair of the Board of Finance. What happens to the Board of Finance? Uh, yeah. Well, the Board of Finance um, vice chair, Mark Porter, will be acting chair. Okay. So, the, you know, Mark has been uh, vice chair for four to six years already. So there the continuity of leadership mm -hmm. and and um, eventually there would be either appointed a member to fill Dave's position okay. on the Board of Finance, or it could be something that would be elected in November. Okay. Um, but uh, with that said, uh, the, uh, the chair of the Board of Finance, who had a tremendous amount of, uh, of financial knowledge about the town, mm -hmm. and uh, that five-year plan I was talking about, he's the one mm -hmm. that monitored that and updated it, mm -hmm. along with an awful lot of other things. And uh, a lot of times, um, Dave, uh, he wasn't uh, in this direction or he wasn't in this direction, mm -hmm. and he was able to pull the two directions yeah. closer to each other so that there could be something that could be passed or, or approved mm -hmm. uh, by the Board of Finance that uh, Sometimes didn't make anybody happy, uh, <laughs> yes. but you know. But it's some, very neutral. But, but sometimes helpful. when you don't make anybody happy, it means that you probably did the best solution you it's could. That's true. So it's very true. So my so my big shoes to fill. There's an awful. The, Mark is certainly up to filling the shoes, uh, but there are huge shoes to fill, yeah. and I just wanted to make sure that uh, we'll put it in Let's Talk Turkey in August, also the August edition of Let's Talk Turkey. But I just wanted to let folks know that a long time. Uh, fixture in town uh, has uh, moved to uh, a Vermont pasture. <laughs> Not a greener pasture, but a Vermont pasture, <laughs> uh, as opposed to East Grammy. Yeah. So my thanks to Dave. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for mentioning that. So, so, so we, we're, uh, we're doing the barns, uh, yes. and we uh, got approval for $23,000 to repay, uh, replace 20 of the air bottles for the Firemen's, oh, right. uh, yeah, their air, uh, there's a name for them that I'm blanking out. Whatever, their respirator. But it, yeah, but the, uh, and, and so uh, the, uh, there's a shelf life on the air bottles. Right. So we're rotating, uh, we're, we're replacing 20 this year and 20 next year, and that will take care of that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, then also uh, we've got uh, $15,000 that was capital dollars for the uh, uh, renovation of the kitchen over at the Senior Community Center, uh, which will access $15,000 worth of a grant from the Hartford Foundation. Mm -hmm. And it'll be ceiling tiles replaced, the grids, uh, the metal grids will be painted, the uh, cabinets uh, will be painted, uh, the current counter will be ripped out mm -hmm. uh, and a new counter put in place and updating all the plumbing, which needed to be updated. Uh, three sinks and, and a, uh, two garbage disposals. So seven or eight years ago, we um, did the fixture, uh, the um, refrigerator, the stove, mm -hmm. and the dishwasher, and now we're gonna be uh, updating the, uh, the right. rest of it, the mm -hmm. physical plant. Uh, and uh, you know, some of this is uh, will be new, but some mm -hmm. of it will be frugal uh, use of uh, of uh, cabinets. Uh, the cabinets mm -hmm. are good. So we'll have to do some repairs on some of the uh, the, the uh, drawers, uh, but mm -hmm. uh, cabinets are good. And some will paint them. 
Yeah. Uh, we'll put new hardware up, and mm -hmm. they'll think it's out of, what's that, HGTV? Yeah. <laughs> they'll think it's out of HGTV. Well, there's uh, a community dinner coming up this Thursday. I assume it's starting after our correct. the community okay. dinner. Yes, but. it'll be it'll be August, September when we're, okay. we're doing this. Okay. And, um, yeah, and, and I'm glad you said, talked about the community dinner. There's so many things that happen there. The Lions dinners yeah. happen there. The community uh, cuisine happens there. Uh, where you know a couple hundred people, uh, residents from the community, come mm -hmm. to have a meal together. Uh, the you know women's club, the uh, Boy Scouts, mm -hmm. the Girl Scouts, uh, their senior services, uh, mm -hmm. senior club. There's all sorts of activities that happen in the senior community center, and a lot of them are circled around food. And the food, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so to have a, a, a kitchen that's um, mildly updated uh, mm -hmm. uh, certainly reflects uh, taking care of a resource that is heavily used. Yeah, definitely. So. Good. Is there an update about um, just the building committee and where we are with Oh my and gosh, all those? yeah. <laughs> That's one reason why I don't feel like it's slow in the summertime right yes. now. Yes. Oh my gosh. The, um, so from a roof perspective, uh, we are uh, in the process of finishing up the Yellow Grove roof. So okay. the Yellow Grove roof has been installed. Uh, there'll be, there's still a lot of work to do. We anticipate that it'll be finished August 10th, but it's watertight at this point. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, flashing and a lot of different other things okay. that need, you know, tar and stone and mm -hmm. a lot of different other things that are going to happen. Uh, in, but we anticipate uh, roughly three, three to four weeks that they'll be okay. completed there. And um, actually, uh, there was an awful lot of preparation work that had to happen over at the middle school, high school roof yeah. with plumbing and everything, and that plumbing is all completed, and actually they are tearing off the roof even as we speak. Okay. Uh, they, well, they have a ticking time clock for it. They should do. Right? We, we so. got to uh, we <laughs> got to get uh, uh, for the substantially complete is what they call it. Yeah. We want to be substantially complete by August 20th. Now, there'll still be workmen there, they'll be doing flashing, they'll be doing other things, but right, right now, you're, you know, just picture 30 th some odd thousand square feet that you're mm -hmm. peeling off the, the roof, mm -hmm. and then you're putting a new roof down, right. and you're putting a roof down with, uh, that's going to be, instead of being flat, it's going to be pitched uh, in uh, some areas, okay. uh, and it'll reflect a lot more insulation, and there's all yeah. sorts of, of uh, uh, efficiencies that, that will happen, but it's major, major projects. I mean, I just signed a check for a million dollars for the down payment on the work that's yeah. and materials that have been purchased and things. So if you drive mm -hmm. around town, uh, you know, the middle school, high school, you'll see yeah. a lot of dumpsters, and yeah. equipment, and materials. And there are dumpsters um, outside of. The and there's town dumpsters hall right outside now. the town hall because uh, we're we're starting to work on the town hall roof. Uh, so we have the school, the two school roofs that we're doing, and also we're doing uh, uh, we're going to do the community center roof uh, and town hall roof, and then the other three roofs that we talked about. We'll do those probably in the fall. Mm -hmm. But we're trying to get as much done as we, we as we can. Uh, and, uh, you know, when you have an older building, well, it's not that old, it's 1970, mm -hmm. but you have a building, uh, you know, there are some of the, the materials that were used uh, mm -hmm. when uh, you start to take off the roof, sometimes you, you, you can see and you can say, oh, gee, you know, we may have to put some sheathing down right. that we didn't anticipate. So yeah. we're in the process of, of doing, uh, figuring that out right now. We're looking at some of it and we're saying, you know, if we're going to do this for a 30-year job, mm -hmm. we want to make sure we do it right. Yeah. Uh, it's too much money and, and effort on the town's part not mm -hmm. to do it right. Mm -hmm. And um, when you know, when you open up the walls, if you're mm -hmm. you know, doing renovations at the house and you have to find something that you didn't expect, it's true. Um, you can do that with roofs too. Uh, mm -hmm. The uh, all grove roof went uh, rather. Uh, rather well, <laughs> and uh, no surprises there. Uh, middle school, high school, uh, don't anticipate any surprises, but there was a tight budget to start with, and um, we, um, they used to, like a concrete product, 
mm -hmm. uh, for the roof uh, that, um, and then they, they uh, nailed the, uh, or screwed, and in this case I think it was nailed, nailed in the, the uh, roof tiles. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, when you're taking that, that off, uh, you, you have to do what is called a pull test, and you know, so you're, you're seeing how much force it takes to take for the shingle to come off, okay. or the nail to be pulled off, mm -hmm. because you want to make sure that it meets whatever the manufacturer's standards are, yeah. and uh, that way the warranty is good. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're in the process of figuring that out a little bit. So we anticipate it to be a little further ahead on the mm -hmm. town hall roof than what we are, but we'll take our time and do it right. Well, and when you say 1970, it's like, oh, that wasn't that long ago, but when you do the math, that was 50 years ago, or 49 years ago. 49 <laughs> working 50. on 50. Yeah. yeah, so suddenly you're like, oh, I can see where, yeah, roofs and things like yeah, that. Yeah, so it's, 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 you know, structurally, it's, it's, it's a great, it, it was a well, it is a well-built building. Yeah. Structurally, it's very good shape. It's just to make sure that the uh, roof shingles are being properly adhered. Mm -hmm. We need to do a couple tests to make sure yeah. that uh, it's uh, going to be able to do what we want it to do. Otherwise, we'll put plywood up. So, mm -hmm. you know, but, so you put you that. Replace. You, right. So you don't replace it. You just put the pl adhere on the plywood on top, okay. and then you nail the, the okay. shingles. Just to give it something to hold on to better. Okay. How about the roads? Roads are fine. Uh, the uh, um, uh, better than fine. We're doing wonderful. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, so we we started in April fifteenth by doing the town campus and the you know, Center Street and Memorial Drive. Then we moved over into Seymour Road, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, you know all the roads that I've talked about so far are heavily traveled. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and then we did Spoonville, 1.67 miles of Spoonville Road, mm -hmm. uh, and we were able to to get that accomplished. Um, we're at this point we're uh, we've uh, in the last couple of weeks we've done Hamilton Road, uh, which is off of uh, Hatchet Hill. Mm -hmm. We've done. If somebody is really a long timer in town, when I say this, they'll know what I mean. We uh, paved East Granby Estates. Uh, okay. And East Granby Estates is 40 years ago, uh, what they called uh, Seneca. Uh, oh, Maze, of, Tuckahoe. Uh, yeah, Maze and uh, Tuckahoe and Broken Arrow. Uh, okay. And uh, so we've completed that area. Uh, we, as we've been going, we've been addressing drainage and you know, mm -hmm. in, in drawing, installing drains, mm -hmm. uh, or because the biggest uh, deterrent or undermining of roads is water. Yeah. And so oh, sure. we're making, we're working on the drainage, whether it's storm drains or, or curtain drains or uh, curbing to help direct the water right. where it needs to go. So we uh, we're, we're complete on that. Um, we uh, ran into a, a minor bump in the road, uh, literally and figuratively, uh, <laughs> for Stark Drive, uh, which is off of Spoonville. And uh, so we're in the process of completing that now. Okay. It took a, we thank all the folks at Stark Drive uh, for their patience. Uh, we, it, was, uh, it, it had never been paved before, or mm -hmm. repaved. So uh, it was one of those 50 some odd year old. Uh, mm -hmm. That road might be from 53, I'm not sure. Wow. Uh, but but it, you know, I might be I might be mixing it up with another road. But yeah. I mean, so you know, it's sixty, it's, it's sixty some odd years old. Yeah. And um, and you know, it, it, and even if it's sixty or fifty five, mm -hmm. if it's nothing's ever been done to it, you have to take the road down to dirt. Right. And then you have to create a base, mm -hmm. and then start to to work full, you know, backwards uh, by building it back up with the asphalt and things like that. And there was, uh, the vendor made a mistake uh, on how they graded it, and it's such a mistake that it would have caused some issues down the road. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, at, at the town uh, insistence, uh, and uh, this is a reputable company uh, mm -hmm. vendor, and they knew that they needed to make it right, and they said, oh, great, you're absolutely right, we're going to make it right. So mm -hmm. we had to put some extra steps in there, uh, but Stark Drive should be almost complete, if not complete, uh, yeah. as we speak. Well, that's good. So uh, then we're, uh, you know, the, we've got some other small roads that we're going to be working on, but also the big project coming up in the fall is going to be Newgate Road. Yeah. So 
the first year of the paving project, where you know we we really had a Big lot of our, with a lot of our arteries. I mean, yeah. we've you know we did the chip ceiling uh, of uh, Woolcott and mm -hmm. of Floydville Road, mm -hmm. uh, and that's you know, a couple miles worth. You know, the mm -hmm. chip ceiling is that process. You put the tar down and the stone down, and yeah. then. Uh, it adheres and then you sweep it off after a week uh, and uh, it's a uh, it helps uh, stretch out the lifespan of the road by mm -hmm. seven to eight years uh, and it's just it's part of the maintenance and this roof uh, road plan is, is roads and it's paving but it's also mm -hmm. a maintenance program too yeah. so that we don't get back into the steps mm -hmm. that we we used to be in uh, so and so anyway, so we made a lot of good progress, and uh, the big, so. big one is going to be Newgate, but... Uh, right. And Spoonville, yeah, Spoonville is a big one, too. Yeah, well, and then Holcomb wasn't done that many years ago, no, so we, some we of did, bigger roads we, are... Yeah, so uh, a lot of the crossroads in town, uh, Newgate's a big crossroad, Holcomb's a big crossroad, we did that three or four years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, Hatchet Hill needs work, but that's a town, That's not a town road, that's a state road. It is a state road. That's okay. Route 540, that's a state road. Mm -hmm. Uh, but on the other side of uh, Route 20, I mean, uh, Route 187 mm -hmm. is uh, Seymour, and we, we did Seymour. Right. Uh, and that's that's a cross road also. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, sometimes it's a road, uh, a truck cross road, and we're trying to, to uh, work so that that doesn't happen. And I think mm -hmm. we, you know, by making it a no through street, by getting it approved by the state as mm -hmm. a no through street, I think that's helped a little bit, but you still get that one uh, that one truck driver that mm -hmm. it's his first time in town and he's never mm -hmm. going to be back again and he it's goes okay. the wrong way down the road yeah. uh, it, you know it's a no through road and he goes through it anyways mm -hmm. uh, so occasionally that can happen but uh, we certainly uh, certainly uh, are, are seeing and hearing from people that there's less trucks on the road which That's was good. the purpose because 40 percent of the population of the town lives off of Seymour or Spoonville. Yeah. Uh, so it's really, uh, really important to maintain those uh, for for the neighborhoods uh, and not as a commercial way when there's a lot of other commercial ways yeah. that people can take. Mm -hmm. Whether it's you know Route 187, uh, well you could go to 20, but you could take 187 mm -hmm. you know, a, a mile down the road. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways. So we're not impacting or impinging on interstate commerce. Or nor are we being uh, uh, truck adverse. We're being resident friendly. Right. So yeah. quality of life is important. So so, so lots of really good stuff. So for a road like Hatchet Hill, where I mean the majority of it's good, but it's just that tight curve, which I love and hate at the same time because I love the character of it. But come on, Amanda, you come on, Amanda, you put the foot down on that. Don't you? <laughs> yeah, right. Put the pedal down on the gas. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, it, it kind of gets dug up on there. Do you, is, is that something like you contact the state and then tell them, like, hey, this is a road you should be checking out, kind of repair it? Or we, who, who does that? Uh, we, uh, first of all, the state does a pretty good job of staying on top of all the yeah. roads. There has to be so many roads. I mean, yeah, they and they're very uh, familiar with that road right now because uh, they're looking at changing some of the signs. Uh, they, they call them Chevron signs. Uh -huh. Uh, this the you know it's the arrow signs. Uh -huh. uh, so on some of the curves, and so they they have got different standards now, and so mm -hmm. they've done a lot of analysis on that road. And uh -huh. one of the things that that I've asked them on behalf of the town is to just replace the signs. Don't mm -hmm. take them down. Yeah. Uh, because there was a couple of signs that they were going to take down, and okay. with the being a big crossroad, being very curvy, uh -huh. it's a busy road, but it also feels like you're in the middle of the sticks because yeah. it's country and everything. Yeah. Uh, it, it it's deceptive. You know, oh gee, you know how many people are on this road? Well, yeah. an awful lot of people go yeah, on the road. Yeah, it's a tight corner. So any long story short, is the as the states well mm -hmm. aware of, of the condition of the road because mm -hmm. they're looking at the signage and everything. Well, and but even today they're cutting trees there to yeah. kind of I think to get a better clearance. Correct, correct. Although so. I, th I I would imagine that was probably the electric company. But, oh yeah. But it's a coordinated effort. Yeah. But okay. the uh, but curious. but we uh, we certainly do talk to them about the concerns we have on roads. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Um, any other things with the bonding anticipation notes? Yeah, the uh, so uh, we the bond was nine uh, that was approved was nine point uh, nine million nine hundred fifty one thousand on a twelve point two million dollar project. The difference is going to be made up by the state uh, mm -hmm. in reimbursement um, and. Uh, uh, that they uh, gave us a different rate, so it's, we're going to get a couple hundred thousand dollars less than we thought, but uh, we're okay. working that into the budget, and we think we're going to be fine. Okay. Uh, so we had to so you have to pay for things. <laughs> and uh, so you've got to pay for the road work that you're doing, you've got to pay for the roofs, and you've got to pay for the entire amount of the roofs because you, you, you can't say to the vendor, well, wait three months and, uh, when I get back, and reimbursement for the state, I'll pay you yeah. the rest of it. Right. Uh, so, uh, so we did a budget and said, okay, the entire cost four plus million dollars of a roof mm -hmm. and a million uh, and two million dollars worth of road work we anticipate mm -hmm. we're going to do, and some of the other things that we're, we're also going to do. We figured, and so we ended up borrowing six point four million. Uh, we got basically a little bit less than a 1.5 percent, uh, and it was like 1.4 percent interest rate. Mm -hmm. So we had budgeted uh, a, a budget of roughly 3 percent because okay. in January the rates were at 2 percent and they were mm -hmm. going up. So mm -hmm. we used 3 percent as a guide number, mm -hmm. as a budget number. Well, um, the interest rates went down, it's nice. uh, so it's nice. So yeah. it's not any extra money or anything, it's just mm -hmm. less expense. Yeah. But that's okay. It's still less. But that's end. that's okay. So we, uh, yeah. So we'll, we'll spend sixty or seventy thousand dollars less in interest this year okay. than what we thought we were going to. So nice. that's all good. And uh, so the bond anticipation notes. Uh, we go. We went out in the marketplace on June on July second. Uh, it came in favorable for us, and uh, tomorrow we received the six point four in our checking account. Nice. So. Uh, so that's all good. It's exciting for a little while until you have to write the checks anyway. Yeah, just write the checks. <laughs> <laughs> the money goes. Yeah. Uh, now you're looking for a youth services commission. Yeah, we have an opening. Yeah, we, we uh, talked about that at the last meeting. Uh, yeah. If there's any uh, adults, uh, uh, whether you're a parent or not, uh, that you are concerned uh, about the town, and uh, concern is not the right word, uh, interested in town and yeah. would like to give back or bring some talents uh, in that you're, you're able to, uh, to help the town that you like. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that we, we are biased. We think we have a really nice town. Yeah. Uh, I believe there was someone I was talking to today that said, I'm just having a nice crampy day. I, you know, I went there, you know, I, I see all this work going on as I'm on Hatchet Hill and the trees are being cut, uh, so it's going to be safer to drive. And I've got this, you know, I see all the, the new roads and the new parking lots and all that sort mm -hmm. of stuff. And, you know, I'm having a nice crampy kind of day. Yeah. Well, <laughs> So aren't I. It's a good community that we have, and if you are having the East Grammy type of days where you want to help out your community, uh, give a call to the Selectman's office, 860-413-3301, mm -hmm. and I'll tell you all about the Youth Services Commission and what it does and what uh, the time requirements would be, mm -hmm. but we could use a volunteer. Yeah. And That's young or old, doesn't matter. Uh, all you need to, you know, you can be a grandparent. Uh, yeah. uh, you can not have any children, but be really interested in your community and realize that the future of our country and our state and our town are our children, and maybe mm -hmm. there's something that I can do to help develop that process. Yeah. So uh, long and short is we, uh, is we need a volunteer. Yeah, sounds good. Now the um, RCC permits came out July. Yeah, so is, is renewal time, your $50 renewal fee, uh, same fee that it has been ever since it was put into its, uh, existence, uh, is $50 and uh, you have until August 3rd to renew. So okay. it's Saturday, August 3rd. So Meaning you can only use your old pass until August 3rd before getting a new one. But you can get one any time of year if you're getting a brand new one. Right. If you're getting a brand new one, you can buy it any time there. Uh, they're not prorated, so you pay the fifty dollars, right. whether it's May or whether so it's you're better off doing it now. <laughs> whether it's September, yeah. And uh, in order to use uh, the RCC, 
you can you don't need to pay for any of the recycling so mm -hmm. you know the plastic and the paper and the electronics and the oil there's no charge for that ever that's right. free recycling uh, we'd rather have it there in the container than on the side of the road yeah. um, so we're you know th that's fine but if you want to use the municipal solid waste mm -hmm. um, garbage yeah. uh, or, or uh, Construction waste. Mm -hmm. You you need to you need to pay for that. And like, so I'm going to use that at home. Ask my children to take out the municipal solid waste. <laughs> 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 Call it MSW. Oh, take the MSW off. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway. So uh, yes, so anyway. You so so, you, so you, you you pay for it, and it helps defray the cost of, of the total operation. Right. Uh, and uh, you need a valid pass, and the uh, the new ones are effective July first, but you have until August. You, I show, I don't want to confuse people by saying you have until August third. You have until the end of July. It just so happens the next day, time that the. RCC is open is August third. Yes. So if, I got you. if you if you don't if you haven't uh, purchased it prior to August third, you you know, pull in, stop, yeah. get your you know, get your ticket, uh, your permit rather, and then mm -hmm. you're good for another year. Okay. Perfect. And Newgate Prison has a lot going on. Yeah, they're busy, up. busy, busy, busy. I love that. It's fantastic. And the, yeah, it's great. And the uh, so anyways uh, on Sunday. Let's see. July twenty first. There's it's uh, there's two things that are happening. One is from a statewide perspective. There's four state museums. So Old Newgate is one. Eric Sloan in Kent is another. Henry Whitfield in Guilford, and Prudence Crandall in Canterbury. Okay. All four of those are state uh, state operated and state run, mm -hmm. and they uh, they there's free admission at any of those four oh, okay. on Sunday. So it's a it's beautiful fantastic. day, and you say, hey, I love Old Newgate, and I've been there many, many times, but I haven't been over at Eric Sloan and Kent. Yeah. What's that all about? Or at Guilford, go down to the shoreline. Uh, yeah. uh, you can. So again, it's free admission this coming Sunday, July 21st. In addition to the free admission um, they, at Newgate, mm -hmm. they're having a mineral show also. Oh, um, I heard that was really cool. They did it last year, and yeah. it was a huge success, right? Yeah, yeah, they have so much of a success, they wanted to do it again. Yeah. So the, uh, it's, um, you know, it's a lot of different vendors and mm -hmm. things in there. It's so pretty interesting, and hopefully uh, they'll have a very successful event. And, a visual, uh, and so that's on the 21st, so free admission on the 21st, uh, the mineral show uh, on the 21st, the Tales of the Dungeon, uh, <laughs> so that'll be a reenactment on July 28th at mm -hmm. 1 p.m. and at 2.30, mm -hmm. and August 3rd and, to, and the 4th from 10 a.m. to 4.30 uh, p.m. You can purchase one museum admission and you can go to another museum free. And mm -hmm. in this particular case, the, the pairs are the Connecticut Trolley Museum in East Windsor and Old Newgate Prison Arts. Okay. So you can buy a ticket at the Trolley Museum and then you know, have a couple of nice hours there. That's uh -huh. I, we, I've done that when my son was younger, yeah. we, we did that. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can do the Trolley Museum and then you can uh, hop over to, uh, you know, on your way home mm -hmm. before you get to the house, go to Old Newgate, yeah. and you don't have to pay any more. Nice. Uh, it, so, it's that particular day is uh, was well, the weekend. It's the third and fourth of August from 10 a.m. to 4:30. Mm -hmm. You purchase one museum admission, and you can go to the other museum free. So buy, buy one at East uh, Windsor's Connecticut Trolley Museum, and go to Old Newgate for free, or other way around. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah, I like so that they do stuff. some of those combining because there are some museums like you think you go to one, and then you forget that there are other really great ones in the area. Very cool. Um, so there was recently there was something that happened over at Signature Flight at the airport. Yeah, the, um, do you want to the, talk kind of just a, I mean what that was and what's yeah, happening it, it over was there? On, it was on uh, it was on the airport property, and uh, it um, was the Signature Flight hangar, mm -hmm. uh, and there was a uh, an error where there was some foam that was mm -hmm. firefighting foam was discharged 
uh, and it, it went into the drain mm -hmm. and then it went, uh, you know, and these, some of these systems are going to be updated. Yeah. Uh, it, it, right now, uh, it, it, if it was installed now, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have gone anywhere. But yeah. in this particular case, it went to the Pequannock or Windsor, mm -hmm. the Pequannock uh, MDC uh, water pollution sewage. Okay. And, uh, and eventually got uh, put into the Farmington River, which mm -hmm. eventually got into uh, the Connecticut mm -hmm. River. So the point of it is, my understanding is, if there were to be a fire with an airplane, that all of that fuel, the point is to fill the building up and the foam fills the whole building up in order to contain, uh, you know, if there were a, a leak or something like that, right. right? Right. And then somehow it just didn't go where it was supposed to go, or? Basically, it, you know, I mean, we'll do the, the folks that are, you know, they're doing all they sorts of, they, yeah, of, they're doing okay. all sorts of inspections and looking, and, uh, and the airport's been very proactive trying to see, okay, well, where else are these? And actually, yeah, it's, yeah. It, and actually it's something that's a nationwide concern. Okay. Uh, everywhere, uh, and so, anyways. Uh, so it has good intention, but yeah. It, yeah it's, but the execution, wrong, of the, yeah, it, it got where it wasn't supposed to go, okay. and, uh, and and it went into the sanitary sewer system, which mm -hmm. eventually found its way into the Farmington River. Mm -hmm. So uh, the whether it's the airport authority or whether it's uh, the environmental protection um, deep, mm -hmm. um, the they they've taken a lot of steps and they're doing private well sampling, evaluating uh, private drinking wells that were protect, uh, potentially at risk, uh, and it's uh, it's called uh, the actual chemical itself is called. Oh, the aqueous yeah, film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I'm forming foam. Yes. Or is it more complicated? Name? No, I think you okay. can. I knew I'd seen it. Uh, aqueous <laughs> film forming foam called AFF release is what happened. And um, there weren't any wells in East Granby that were affected. This yeah. was actually in a very um, industrial area that's mm -hmm. not heavily populated mm -hmm. uh, where, where this happened and um, and then so they're doing private well sampling at, you know whether it's Windsor or Windsor Locks uh, uh, they're doing fish sampling um, they are doing a Farmington River ecological assessment mm -hmm. uh, they're sampling at the MDC wastewater treatment plants uh, where they collected samples of the wastewater and sludge and uh, they're going to be doing an analysis of that um, the uh, uh, the ecological assessment um, is a case of an environmental consultant preparing a work plan to look at the impact of this to the Farmington River, uh, which they'll also do sediment sampling. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the that work plan is expected to be submitted to DEEP uh, by the end of July. So they're doing a lot of different things now. One of the things, especially when when I was thinking about the sediment sampling, one of the things that are show uh, that a river or stream are very clear and clean mm -hmm. is the mussels. Mm -hmm. you know, so there's mussels. Well, Farmington River has a lot of mussels. So, yeah. you, know, you, you know, if it's in the sediment, does it go into the mussels? And what yeah. would the effect of that be? And a lot of other things. And mm -hmm. there's many a folk uh, that, uh, that fish the Farmington River or Salmon Brook. And mm -hmm. So you know what what would be the effect on this? Uh, this right. uh, they'll also will do soil testing around uh, along the sewer route, and uh, they're doing kind of, um, initial soil sampling on uh, the signature flight hangar. Uh, they uh, did uh, sampling to determine what was impacted by the release, mm -hmm. and that happened the first week of July. So the, all the data that they're getting, uh, then they'll come up with action plans and everything. But it, even though it really doesn't affect residents in East Granby uh, because it happened uh, in part of East, uh, the airport that was in East Granby, I just mm -hmm. wanted to mention it to people that uh, it doesn't appear that it had any effect on East Granby, but it mm -hmm. certainly has had some effect 
on uh, some of the other communities around, and certainly the river. And you know, it's something that you, you know, they were warning when it first happened. They were warning, you know, if you see a white foam on the on the Farmington River, don't touch it. You know? Right. And uh, so I think the foam has been mitigated, but there's the residue remains. Right. Yeah. So it'll take a little bit to. Clear but they're on. Deep is up. Good. Well, and I'm glad they're thinking up plans on how to make that a better system nationwide, just so you don't have that happen other places as well. Yeah. And I know uh, the, the, within a week or two, the airport had done a survey of all of their buildings to see if there was any similar issues or concerns. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a result, uh, the plans will be put in place and future occurrences will be minimized, mitigated, or prevented. Fantastic. Well, thank you. Is there anything else we need to know before we go into the month of August, or is everything else? No, I think we talked. Everything down the road. I think we. <laughs> I think we, we, we're going to. Hopefully, uh, when we meet again, uh, we can talk about almost finished with the roof project at the schools. Mm -hmm. uh, we can talk about continuing road projects. We can talk about a couple of the capital projects that we'll be mobilizing to complete mm -hmm. in August and, and September. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of other good things, uh, quality of life things that will be happening. Uh, you know, so I always enjoy the August and September Let's Talk Turkeys uh, mm -hmm. editions because it's so much vitality and energy of mm -hmm. all the different events that people are going to be uh, mm -hmm. uh, advertising or mm -hmm. Publicizing, so it's well, there's nothing like fall in New England, so <laughs> I'm glad we take advantage of that. <laughs> I'm glad we do too. Well, thank you for going through everything with us, and uh, we'll see everyone back in August. My pleasure. Enjoy. <laughs>